because your major assignment is to create a ground plan for your apartment, we are going to go through ground plans and understand that there is a complete language of ground plans and how they communicate to the visual audience. We've seen this ground plan before when we had our introduction to scenic design, and we understand this as a ground plan of a set on the Pardo stage. Now, just to um, reiterate, a ground plan is a bird's eye view. We're looking down on top of the theater space, and there's certain things we need to understand. For example, whenever we see thicknesses that have slash lines, we understand that we have cut open all these walls and removed the top of the theater so we can look down inside of it. So these are the standard walls of the theater all the way around. You can see. Um, we actually have some of the other pieces of the stage here. This dotted line that goes clear across the stage is the plaster line of the theater. It's the very back of the proscenium. So here is the hard proscenium of the Pardo stage. The theater also has an artificial proscenium setting in on both sides, cutting down the actual sight lines. These are the furthest seats in the theater on the sides. Here's a house right and a house left sight line. And this shows you what the audience will see from those seats. Therefore, the audience is sitting over here will not be able to see this part of the set because of the false proscenium piece. This side has full view, just the way the set is placed on stage. The other thing that's, that's visible is the center line, CL, that shows the center of the stage. And with the plaster line and the center line, the scene shop, once they've built this, knows how to place this. They'll actually measure from that midpoint on stage out to key elements of the stage to know where to place them on stage when they start setting up the set on the stage. The other thing that a ground plan does do is, you will note, there are small heights also specified on the ground plan. So this one says that we're going up six inches for this step and then six more to make it 12 inches for this step. So heights of walkable surfaces are also shown. If we go back to the staircase, we're at 12 inches still. And so our next step is uh, six more at 18. And this line then signifies that we have eight inch, I'm sorry, six inch increments all the way up until we get to the top step at nine feet. The other thing that a ground plan is showing is some communication of the walls that are thicker lines throughout, doorways and doors that swing in them so we know which direction the doors are moving. And this floor plan also is showing some of the furniture pieces and their placement within the set. We have one other big oval that's on the Pardo stage. And the dotted line here suggests that it goes underneath the stage, underneath this platforming of the set. This is the revolve that is built into the Pardo theater. It was not used for this set. This piece did remove a little bit, but it had its own revolution and its own wheels. The main reason that we have the big revolve here is that it also helps us in setting this set on stage in relationship to the revolve, and we can use it to determine some of the locations of some of the set pieces. The other thing that we typically do in a floor plan is to add um, some of the masking. The masking refers to curtains or drops that are added to the stage so that an audience member sitting here looking upstage does not see past these curtains. These block their view so they can't look backstage. These appear to be movable soft curtains because of the way they're rendered. And this one back here is a nice solid piece of fabric 
that's hanging the full width of the stage that is probably a psych or a scrim of some sort hung at the back so that we can't see over the top of the set and any further than this this far upstage. What we're learning is that there is um, a symbol dialogue that is used for stage. So USITT is the United States Institute for Theater Technology, an organization in which theater designers of all sorts belong, and USITT has helped set some standard ground plan symbols so that we have a common language on ground plans. We already saw that a flat or a wall is a um, is a line drawn on stage with some thickness to it to show that it has dimension. If we actually start breaking open those lines, we're going to start suggesting that this is an archway. Now, the basic understanding of a floor plan is that anything drawn on the floor plan is seen at ground level. So this is the ground level of the walls that we can see at this point. But the dotted line suggests that off the floor, there is a cutaway of this wall. So up above, here is the wall continuing across. It is cut off the floor at this point, and people can therefore walk underneath. Now, if we simply cut a hole in the flat, we would um, see the thickness from the audience and understand that this is, not, this is an artificial wall. So what we frequently do is we built what's called a reveal, another partition of wall that goes upstage. <clears throat> and now as the audience is looking at it, they see thickness and they see this as a much thicker wall than it really is in real life. So therefore, we have the cutaway of the top of the front of the door and the back of the reveals. This suggests a door opening that has solid walls above. Now we've added a doorway into that archway, and we have specified a swing for that door, so we understand that it is an archway with a door that opens in and out. Here is an archway that has a door that swings double directions, so it's a swinging door. Here is the same opening that we had before of a wall with an archway cut in it to it, and then we have two doors, one on this side and one on this side, that can move into a new location. So we use a different type of dotted line to specify that this can slide in this way, and this one can slide in this way, and therefore we have a sliding elevator door, we would say, to actually close off this archway. Now, we have specified that we are looking from ground level. What happens when we have a window? Because a window does not usually go all the way to the ground. Well, we typically just draw it in with solid lines, even though we know it's not touching the ground. So here again is an opening in the wall that has um, a reveal, and at the very back of it, it has um, partitions or mullions if you've ever seen a window and all the multiple panes, the slabs of wood or the little um, cut pieces of wood that are in between all those glass are called mullions. And so here are the mullions of the window. So we know this is a window that is recessed into the wall representing a window. Here is a window that's in the wall and it has windows that actually open. We can see the mullions again in those window pieces, but we see that they swing open both directions. So that's a casement window. These are different wall structures and windows and doors cut into them. That's how we communicate those um, on a ground plan. Sometimes we have actual hard surfaces that people are walking on, platforms, and those are specified with solid shapes. So here is a regular platform and it is because we have a dimension on it, it is 18 inches off the ground. So it is a step up of 18 inches to go from here to here. This specifies it's a hard structure. We do not always use these cross lines. We do that mainly on what's called a construction floor plan that shows each of the elements separate. Now, here is the same rectangle. And this side starts at zero or at ground level and goes up to six 
inches. So this is a ramp. It's going up into the air as we walk this direction. And that's what the arrow specifies. It starts at zero and it ends at six inches. Here is another type of piece that's called a revolve. It's drawn and then we have a point of pivot in the center of it. Now we know that this circle goes around and around pivoting on this pivot point. We can also specify different kind of curtains. Here is a drapery leg. The curvy, the curvy line suggests that this is a soft piece of fabric, like a curtain, and we're looking down on top of it. And we could specify, here again is another full curtain, but this one is off the stage because it's dotted, it's not touching the ground. So this would be a border or a teaser above the ground. We can show drapery legs as flat unit pieces. Please note that they're thinner than a wall piece that has more dimension. That would specify to the people setting this up that they're going to want to put a pipe in the bottom of this curtain, probably, to keep it very flat to the audience. Here is a flat, like we had over here, but notice that this one's dotted. That suggests that this flat is up in the air or it's underneath something. Dotted lines mean different things. Um, and when in doubt, the key is to always to label, and then people will help understand perhaps what's actually going on. The last thing we'll show over here are some staircases. So, understanding that this step is seven inches, and then another seven inches, and then another seven inches, and so it inclines up to 42 inches starting at 7, going up to 42. All dimensions are given from ground level of the stage. So if this staircase were actually sitting on a one-foot platform, this first step would say one foot seven inches because that step is actually one foot and seven inches above the stage. So we give full height from stage on all of these. Now, this staircase is 7, and then 9, and then 12. That means that these are irregular steps, and we're giving a height for each one of them. This would be a good actor trap, because people, some people are going to do tripping on these because the steps are not equal value. This is a cut line. What it suggests is that this staircase continues on and will probably be in another drawing. So this cuts it off suggesting there's more. Hopefully these are enough of the uh, standard ground plan symbols that will help you in drawing the uh, apartment that you need to be able to draw. Here's another ground plan. Let's just look overall. We see the stage. We see a platform. Um, I'm not quite sure what this means when it's dotted other than the fact that notice that this platform is zero inches here at this part of the stage, and then by the time we get up stage, we're at 14 inches. So I'm suggesting that this is all raked up. It's a raked platform. And then there's a platform behind it at 14 inches, and then there are steps going up 20, 30, 38, 46, 54. So these are, this is a um, half of a spiral staircase, and it's going up and off onto a 54 inch platform, and then here are the escape steps backstage that allow an actor to get back down to zero. We note that it looks like there are painted forms of some sort, some sort of wall structures here and here that are labeled. We'd have to have front drawings to see that. But we can see some of the masking. Here's a, here's a curtain. Here's a curtain at the back. Um, and we see that there are painted forms on the back surface here. Not quite sure what these are. They seem to be touching the ground, whatever they are. And then as we move downstage, we have more painted forms on either side, probably for masking off stage. Then we're getting into some more complex kind of shapes here. Here are some more of these rectangles like that are upstage. We're not quite sure what they are, but there's a repeating um, rectangle showing here and here and here and then matched on the other side of the stage. This appears to be a door unit. Can you see that? Because there's a form, and here are the doors that swing out. So there's a door unit there and a door unit there that opens out French doors. 
and it appears that there are columns of some sort coming off the ground with archways over the top of them. Different thicknesses. Not quite sure why these are this thickness and like this, and then this one's thinner than the rest. Here are circles above the stage because they're dotted, and they have a special mark on them. The triangle lets us know that these are practicals. So these are lights. These are probably chandeliers. So this symbol talks about a practical, a light that's on stage that lights up, is what it defines itself as. We have some furniture downstage, a sofa, a couple of chairs, and here's the plaster line of the theater, and here is the center line of the theater. So all the standards are pretty well shown on this floor plan. Here's another one that we've seen. This is the floor plan for Pride and Prejudice that we've seen in class that has the two jackknife pieces that are hinged right here, or have a pivot point right here, and they swing off stage to these positions. So these show the off stage positions of these two platforms. Then we have all the heights for each of the steps and each of the platforms as people can walk all the way up, all the way up to the very top. We have curtains that drop down in these and over here are shears going up stage covering the black legs that were hung on pipes to be as flat as they possibly could. Upstage we had another black curtain. And then once you were on the top platform, here were the escape steps going all the way down. Again, here's the plaster line of the theater and the center line of the theater. These were chandeliers hanging above. They should be dotted. They were not. Shame on me as the designer that I did not dot them. It's possible that they were dotted in a different kind of um, dotted line that doesn't show this far off. Sometimes that happens if you zoom up too far. And then I think I pointed out that we did use the false proscenium in this show, but we build a new one here with a curtain, a fake wall, that we could roll the piano through to get it out on stage. Okay, let's look at this floor plan and see if we can kind of figure out what's going on. This is for a television show. First of all, we note that it is on a 8-inch riser or platform. So this is an 8-inch riser. It has dimensions, so we see how big it is. It appears to have a sofa and two chairs on it. Note that um, when we do furniture, we typically don't do it from the ground level, though this one does show legs on the couch. And then it looks like there's a monitor on a stand back here. So here's a television monitor and a stand. And then it looks like everything is surrounded by a wall structure. And it says there's a decorative wall here shown by this kind of um, filled in structure. Regular wall structures back here and all the way back here with a reveal stepping back to appears to be a window because it looks like mullions, doesn't it? here and here. Some sort of a platform back here or a seating area. And notice there's a dotted line and it's labeled that there's a header above. So there seems to be a ceiling piece over here and it looks like it has can lighting inside of it. They're dotted also to show that they're up above, not touching the floor. Repeated over here, here's another header above. So it's dotted to show that it's up in the air, and it also seems to have lights in it. Then, if we look back through the windows, they've actually got a traveler track, a curtain of some sort back behind. And then we can see the hard structure of the studio going around and not continued. It would be continuously going on. So we get a basic idea of what this looks like. Let's look at an actual drawing. So here is a front view of what we were just seeing. We can now see the header that goes all the way across, and it does indeed look like it has canned lights in it. Here is the decorative wall structure. It's kind of a brick fieldstone kind of idea over here. Here indeed was a window, so now we can see the window that was at the back. Here is the 8-inch riser, and this is kind of a bench at the back with different items on it that we were shown. Here's the monitor with the stand, the two chairs, and the couch. And here is a different perspective of the same set.
Floor plans start getting more and more involved. Here is a design for Lend Me a Tenor that took place in the Martin Starger and Real Useful Theater Company. It's in the Royal Theater, because here's the theater a Royale could have been. Notice that it has, let's look for it, there's a plaster line across there. And here is a center line. Notice how they did the CL kind of creatively to go with the show, but there is a center line. There seems to be some sort of, oh, it says cyclorama above. So there is a cyclorama going around it, but because the walls are so high, it's off the ground. So if you walked off stage, you could walk underneath it and go off stage without worrying about the cyclorama. It's up in the air off the ground. Then there's the back wall of the set. See how the wall stands out because they've made it thicker. There are doors and reveals. The doors swing downstage. You can see which way they go. And this one opens up and has a wall structure behind it to make it look like it's a closet, as it says right there. So when that door opens up, you see walls behind and you feel like you're looking into a closet. This door opens up and we're looking into a bathroom. So notice you see wall structure and you see a sink and you see half of a bathtub. Why is it only half? Well, if I come downstage and look at the sight line and I take that straight up and across, you'll see that no one sees any further downstage of that bathtub than that much. So they're only putting in as much of the bathtub as they need. That allows an actor to come in, close the door, and then walk off stage without climbing through a bathtub. That kind of makes sense. There's a bed and a wall here. So we're suggesting there's an outer room, and then you go through a doorway here. There's the door swinging stage left, upstage, and there's a bed there. So we're in kind of, this is Lend Me a Tenor, so we're in an apartment and we have the main sitting room here and the bedroom over here with the bathroom. There is a window seat area here with a chair window seat all the way around it. And outside we can see that there's an awning over the top of it. It's labeled to let us know. And then we would look back and see some sort of a drop or a transit back in here it looks like. You can go off through a door here into the kitchen. And there again it has mask, a masked wall. Notice how everything is set back with a reveal to make it look like the walls are thicker than they really are. And they've even given us a little bit of the paint detail that's on the floor. We would have to assume that continues across the room. The sofa, the coffee table, an ottoman. So it's all pretty well lit. You'll notice that there's a bunch of stuff at the front of the stage. Um, archways. I can't quite read all that because it's so small. Scrim, it says, is being used. So there's some sort of a scrim at the very beginning of the show that was is opaque when we show lights from the front. So we can't see the set and then it dissolves and we're suddenly into the show. And then the scrim goes up and we're revealed fully into the show. I'm not going to try to talk us through this one, but this is Guys and Dolls on Broadway. Look how involved that becomes when you have all the pieces and all the fly pieces above. It gets very, very, very involved. You obviously cannot build this set from the ground plan. The ground plan is mainly there to let us know where each of these lines is in relation to the theater itself and which fly line they're on. So these are all the fly line assignments along here. And we know where everything belongs. We also know that a lot of these units probably move around because they're dotted. So they roll up and down stage. So to help you in doing your floor plan, there are versions of um, the pieces that you're going to need on Learning Suite under content. There'll be another module that will talk you through what's there. There are different versions of the floor plan for the Part O. This version has the actual revolve in it and shows you where the traps are in case you needed to have traps for your show. There are also three traps in the apron of the stage. Here's the plaster line. Here's the center line. Here are your sight lines letting you know what audiences are going to see. These audience, this audience on this side can look straight backstage this way, so you'd need to have masking. 
to fill in this side of the stage. You'd need to have masking upstage so you can't see the walls of the theater. And here's another version that is also in there, the second version, that just simply takes away all that um, trap door and revolve information. Incidentally, when you look at it, don't be worried about this one little block. That belonged to all this stuff there, and when I, we erased it all, I didn't get that one taken care of, so I apologize. This is the most useful one for you because it has a center line, the plaster line. You have the sight lines. You can determine yourself whether or not you want the false proscenium in or out by masking this off if you don't want it. You have your symbols. Those are all provided for you, so you can, again, review those. And that should give you all the information you need to be able to do a ground plan. Next, I wanted to just show three different set designs for the exact same production done by different companies. So here is a view of Rumors by Neil Simon. You'll note that this show requires that we have a front door, um, a closet, a basement door, a kitchen door, and a bedroom or more doors upstairs. So all of those have been found in their walls. Notice that the walls step back and have different cuts in them and are different shaped. A lot of that is because that helps hold the walls up practically on set because they're stronger because they're not one long run of walls that could wobble a little bit when you open doors. So here's a fairly good budget used for rumors. Here is another production of rumors that obviously didn't have as much money. So they still have a front door, which looks like it is because it's got double panels. There are still bedrooms upstairs. There is still um, a kitchen, one side or the other, I'm not sure which. And there should be a closet. So maybe one of these is supposed to be their closet. We don't know. Because another one has to be the basement. We're not quite sure which one's the basement door either. They don't have quite as many doors. So we're not quite sure what they're doing, but we do know that this one goes outside, so that's the main door. There's a window there. These walls are longer runs. They do have a corner here and a corner here, so it does help support itself. But it's possible that when you open and close these doors, because there isn't as much um, cut in and out um, going up and down stage, that these will wobble maybe just a little bit more. And then here's another production of the same show that had even less money. They've tried to get as much in. Here's probably the front door over here, maybe a closet door over on this side or basement door. There's the bedrooms upstairs, the kitchens maybe off through this archway. Um, anyway, you get a better idea, but the, again, they staggered the walls out and in to help make sure they help support um, the set. And that just gives an idea of maybe how to design for different budgets with the same production. Hopefully this has helped talk you through ground plans now that you're about to do them so you can communicate back to your audience how you're going to draw your ground plan when you place your apartment on the Pardo stage.